Hey everyone, it's Brick Waffle again, and we are back on the Waffle Mods world. And I have a few things to show you. You might be able to tell from looking at this room that this does not look like the house we were in last time. And this looks a little bit different. That is a carpenter's garage door with some iron bars in it. Um, but this little room right here is actually the new keep on the edge of our castle. So if you remember the last episode, I was uh, recording some castle wall building and whatnot. Well, I took a little break from that, and I did, well, actually, I did a lot more of that in a live stream, and then I moved everything from our little wooden house over to here. We've got some clear glass. You can see we've got a nice view of that uh, swimming cat out there and his swimming friend. And over here, you can see where we had the original castle wall section and the house. We've torn that down and moved everything over to this area here. So in between episodes and partially on the live stream, I have done a lot of moving of the items. So all of our chests over here, the iron chests came upgraded. They're now gold chests. We set up an auto chisel uh, with an adjustable chest that's making cobblestone. And you can see it's still making cobblestone, but there's really not a whole lot of places for it to go because this is full. So we've got some stuff going in here. It's just kind of stuck right now. And this is our, more of our building material pre-chiseled into the kind of wall blocks that we need. Uh, we have a lot of grass out here. Most of it's turned into... Well, most of this dirt's turned into grass. There's a little bit out here by our random ostrich that has not yet spread. And we've finished the exterior wall up to a height of four. So once we get this thing lit up, we're actually going to be pretty safe at night. So this is going to be a really large castle area for us to play with, to play around with. Uh, and that's going to be really good. So we did move the nether portal out of this little courtyard and just back into this corner room in here. And this is the only place that's actually lit up very well right now. But moving it from there to here, since it's the only portal anywhere nearby, they synced up just fine. That all works as intended. And the smeltery is still over here in the corner for now. I can't think of anything better to do with it. Um, let's go ahead and break that because we just have a little bit left. And we just threw some cobblestone in here, some of our excess cobblestone earlier, so I'm not really worried about that. Some seared bricks, that's fine. Um, seared bricks, let's go ahead and take all of this stuff back. This is what we were smelting up at the end of our last recording. And we got nothing left in the smeltery. Our lava tank is working. We do have all of our casts, so things are going pretty well right now. Now you can probably tell this was where the house was before, and this was what was left of our farm, so let's... let's there we go. Get rid of that guy. It's all farmland, or it's all regular grass now. You can see that this part here, this is actually beach grass. And then when we come in this way, well, that's still beach too. I'm wondering why that was ever darker color green. Um, but yeah, the grass does change colors a bit because it looks like it's a sub-biome, but it doesn't really seem to be that way now. It's just kind of fading a bit. Anyway, this back side of this building looks really boring and dull right now. That's okay because remember, the wall is going to come up pretty high and we're going to have that uh, walkway at the top of that. Most of this is going to be covered up, so we won't have to worry about that too much. But let's go ahead and throw all of our metals in the metal chest. And then we have a couple of big things we want to do today. Um, you can see I've got an engagement wing, ri yeah, engagement wing, an engagement ring, and a wedding ring here. So if we get, uh, if we need to go back to the village for some reason, we might see if any of those villagers are inclined in coming back over here with us. Um, and we do have a nice little beachhead right here. And you got a pretty good view from the outside. I should have grabbed a boat. Actually, do I have one? I do. Let's let's hop in a boat real quick. We'll come out here. We'll take a look around at all the swimming cats. I don't know why. But that tower, I think, looks pretty good from out here. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you like that style of architecture. I think it looks pretty good. It's unique. It doesn't quite look just like that, but I think it fits. And it's right here at the front edge of our territory. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's where we're going to be living for now. And I did also uh, dig down. You might have noticed when I was going out of the door here in the beginning. Whoop. Oh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, okay. Great. Come on back, boat. No, let's take another boat to follow the first boat. That should be good. There we go, got one of them. Nope, did we get one of them? There we go. Shallow waters. Okay, so um, you may have noticed that I did go ahead and put the elevator blocks down. They were off of the house, and they went straight down into our little tunnel. I just dug down from here, it wasn't that far, and dug over into that main hallway we had before. Warped skeleton on the mini-map, that's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and close this guy again. And now we've got our elevator block over here. So it's the same thing. It goes down, and then it opens into this nice little wide hallway here. And when we get down to the end of this hallway, you'll recognize it probably pretty quickly. That's our little spawner we'd set up for the skeletons. And uh, we got rotten flesh in there. That's interesting from a skeleton. But it seems to be working pretty well so far. And then uh, around the corner over here, this is where we have our little battery set up. And so now we have two of these heat generators, and they're pouring into these leadstone energy cells that are pouring into this middle one. So we are almost full on three of these batteries. That's going to be great for us. Uh, the downside is getting these out of here without losing them into the lava is actually going to be a little harder than I had anticipated. 
Um, so it might be worth our while to kind of get a bucket or two of lava, pull them up, and then break this very safely. Or maybe we could actually even break this. It was under there. Lava's under there. Uh, but we could we can play around with this a little bit. Maybe we can fill that in underneath. Uh, we don't need all of that to be lava for this thing to work correctly. In fact, let's go ahead and just grab some gravel here too. That'll be easy. Uh, put our boats back. As if we're standing right in front of it, should be pretty easy to do. Hmm, okay, maybe we need some more gravel. If we have to rely on it popping up for us to grab that, I'm a little worried about it. But if we have to stand in front of it, I'm not as worried. That's a deep lava pit. There he goes. So like this, if I, as long as I have room on my inventory. Yeah, there we go. So even though it looked like it was going to be bad for a second there, you can tell it really wasn't. Um, so drop that off. Now we have a nice full load zone energy cell, and these two are still charging, and we can use that for what else we needed to do today. So I don't need this gravel. Go away, gravel, um, and we'll go back up to the surface. So what we want to do is get our start on AE networks, and we're going to need to do several things for that. I'm going to want conduits to automate the creation of uh, all the inscription patterns, and for conduits, we need to be able to smelt alloys, and for that, of course, we need an alloy smelter. Um, so let's see, where did we have our crafting tables? I think we only have one over by the smeltery right now, so let's fix that too. Need one over here where most of our materials are. And I did just move everything around, so it's a little bit confusing. Hey, we got a crafting station. Um, this should work out okay for us. So let's go ahead and look at this stuff. Uh, we want to get an alloy smelter. Great, so we need three furnaces, four ingots, a cauldron, and a machine chassis. So we got most of that stuff. Ingots and cauldron, uh, this one. One, two, three, four ingots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, for the cauldron. And then we're gonna need some furnaces. Uh, there's six cobblestone, do I have more? Is all of my cobblestone? Oh, of course I have more, it's in here. Okay, uh, so let's do that. Grab that cauldron. One, two, three furnaces. And then we just need to make a machine chassis, which is iron bars and iron ingots. So we need a little bit more iron. Grab that. And then a basic capacitor, which is copper, redstone, and gold nuggets. So let's see, let's get a gold bar and copper. Let's just grab some more copper. We'll convert this into nuggets, and we'll need two copper for that much. Be able to put one nugget away. Oh, and redstone dust. So we'll get two of those. Whoops, we will make no, nope. if I can do this right, two machine chassis, and then we're going to make one alloy smelter. Perfect. We'll have an extra machine chassis for the next Ender IO machine we use. Throw that guy in there. Throw all of our iron back in here. And throw our redstone, iron bars, and stone in there because why not? Okay, so we have a redstone energy cell and an alloy smelter, and it's getting to be a little bit towards nighttime, so let's go ahead and run in here. We're going to want to sleep when we do this. Um, and for now, let's just drop the energy cell right there and the alloy smelter on top. And it is charging up with RF. Excellent. So that'll hold 100,000. This has 400,000, so we can get four full charges of the alloy smelter that way. Let's go ahead and run upstairs and make it daytime. And yeah, I know I'm running an outdated version of Mechanism. I'm sure that that will happen some more. We've upgraded the pack relatively recently. I think this is at 1010 as of the time I'm recording this. Um, so that has added ender tech and also thermal dynamics. So we've got a couple more options for piping and cabling. Um, we could actually use some of that stuff for item transfer, but I know how this works, so I'm going to use this for now. Okay, so um, we're going to need some conduits next. So conduit requires conduit binder. We're going to want item conduits. And that's pulsating iron nuggets and conduit binder. Conduit binder is gravel around sand and clay. Oh, and I just threw out that gravel down there, didn't I? Well, now I feel silly. Uh, we've definitely got the sand. Do we have the clay anywhere? We definitely have some clay, because it only needs to be clay balls. There's some gravel. 
And that appeared to be all the gravel that we had. That's unfortunate. Uh, so let's turn this into, well, yeah, let's break it again. And we'll turn all this into clay balls. Now we did manage to plant some trees while we were out here planting all the, or planting, while we were building all these walls, I had some trees planted. So we do have quite a bit of pine wood and we also have quite a bit of rubber wood. Um, that's gonna help us in the future as well. So let's see, do, do conduit, conduit binder, conduit binder composite. And we can make how many of those? Wow, one set of that, that's not good. We definitely need more gravel. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that stuff cooking in a regular furnace. Oh, we need to grab some coal for that. And I'm not going to use the alloy furnace. I know you can for this, but uh, I'm going to save it because we're running on batteries rather than on actually having continuous power. So let's go ahead and grab those two bits of coal. Put that down there and binder composite. We'll cook one stack of that and put that down there. And let's go get some more gravel while we're at it. Okay, so once we get the conduits, what we're gonna do is build some inscribers, and then we're gonna use the conduits and some item filters, I hope, I haven't looked at what the recipe for that is, um, to automate the crafting of all of our processors that we're gonna need for AE. And you can do that without actually having the AE network just by using, um, like I said, item filters to determine what goes into what side of each inscriber. And inscribers don't even require an energy acceptor. They can take uh, energy conduits from Ender IO and other sources of power as well. So that's gonna be good. We'll be able we'll be able to uh, get that automating and get a lot of uh, circuits made, and that's going to be helpful because we need those circuits for our storage and for a lot of other things that you make in AE. And we will need a better source of power here shortly. Uh, we could absolutely use magmatic dynamos and just pump in the lava that we're getting from the Nether. That certainly will work, and it may be what we do in the short term. Um, but you also probably saw that I had quite a bit of yellowite, so we may go ahead and make ourselves a small reactor here from the big, well, a small big reactor from the big reactors mod, and that will give us way more power than we need right now. So that's also a pretty good option for us. Uh, yeah, lots of gravel there. I like that. So come back down this way and pop up to the top. It looks like that part's done. Let's go out here and we'll make up some more binder composite. There we go. Lots more of that. Okay, so let's throw, oh, not that chest, sand, coal, coal, cobble. I know I'm not being the most judicious with my storage here. Let's go ahead and throw other cobble in there and we'll cook up some more of this stuff and some more of that. And that gives us quite a bit of conduit binder. This is going to be probably enough for us to be set for a while. Um, boop, let's throw that in there. And then the other thing we need is the vibrating iron nuggets, pulsating iron nuggets, which we need from pulsating iron, uh, which we can get from ender pearls and iron ingots. So we're going to need to get some more ender pearls. I don't think we have that many in here. Um, well, hey, 18 of them. That's not too bad. That'll be enough for now. And let's get some iron nuggets. Uh, we'll need 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Drop that in there. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and actually, you know what? Let's just save two ender pearls just in case we need them later. And that's a nice even thing we can just drop in the alloy smelter and be done. Okay, so here we go. Ender pearls and iron nuggets. Iron ingots, rather. And that should be cooking up. There it goes. Not the most fast thing in the world, and we can make some capacitors, but again, for now, not really concerned. This is just something we need to make. I'm not trying to get it to be as fast as possible. All right, so we'll leave that alone for now. And then while we're working on that, we can also, that's gonna be the basis for our power conduits, uh, which need the same thing, and also conductive iron, which is even easier. It's redstone and iron ingots, so we can make tons of that. Um, but let's not make tons of it, because we probably won't need that much either. Let's go, go ahead and grab a half stack of that. And one, two, three, four, half stack of redstone. We'll make a half a stack of the of that kind of iron as well. And that'll be we'll put that in there once we get these iron ingots out, or the pulsating iron. Okay, so those would be the first two things. Then we'll also need some basic item filters, which is paper and a hopper. So we're gonna need more iron for that as well. In fact, let's just cut this in half too and save ourselves the iron. 
And that's the one. Iron from that. Okay, and then we're going to need some chests. And you can see we've still got plenty of pine wood left over. Uh, we've also got some rubber wood here and some more raw rubber. That's been helpful too in making the conveyor belt you saw down there in the uh, skeleton farm. So let's go ahead and do this. And I don't remember exactly how many filters we need. I think it's going to be... I think it's actually quite a few. So let's go ahead and just make a bunch of chests. 16 chests, that'll be plenty. And we're going to need a lot of iron to make the hoppers. So we'll do that. Save those two guys to the side. And we'll put these in here. Okay, let's assume 11 hoppers will be enough. And we've got some leftover iron. Not much, though. We'll have to get more iron from down there. We'll throw our chests in one of these, and then we need to get some paper. And I'm pretty sure I have some sugar cane in one of these. You guys shout out at me if you see it. Okay, there we go. Sugar cane. And we don't already have any paper, so let's. I'm going to turn the music down a little bit on this. Alright, so let's do that. And this. And let's see how many we got. One, two, three. Let's just get all that. That's probably fine. Hopper, and was it was it like this? I wasn't paying attention. That's it, perfect. So 11 filters, and that's gonna really help us get everything sorted. So the other thing we're gonna actually have to have, uh, and this is the trickier part, is all the materials. So we'll need gold and diamonds and silicone, which we can get from grinding sand. Um, we are, are we out of diamonds? Did, did you guys see them? Oh, there we go. Yep, okay. So we got a diamond we got to keep in there. Uh, we need a gold bar. We are going to need some redstone. And let's see, what about... Is there an easier way to get silicone rather than the sag mill? Let's check. A pulverizer turns sand into silicone with 100% accuracy. Sag mill... You can get it as a chance off of certain things. Um, clay and redstone and sand as well. So that's 720 RF. You can get more potentially with flint and 1600 RF for pulverizer. So we can get more um, per amount of power by sag milling the sand into silica. Oh, but it's only 50% chance. So that's about the same then because it's 50% chance for 1700. Twice that would be 1440, which is still cheaper than a pulverizer. All right, so let's think about making a sag mill as well. Sag mill, oops, sag mill. And guess what, we've got that machine chassis already. Three flint, four iron, and a piston. Um, oops, there's a piston. And one, two, three flint. And oh, we're down to two iron. So that's gonna be our biggest challenge right here. Uh, let's go ahead and get four of that. We'll, we'll go ahead and make that for now. Uh, sag mill, oops, didn't grab the machine chassis, did we? Sag mill. And let's go back in here and plop that down as well. And we need that side to also produce power. Good. Let's go ahead and take these out for now and uh, get the next set of iron materials going. One, two. Uh, that's okay because we only need nuggets, not ingots. So that'll that'll be fine. We can we can work with this. We'll make this happen. Uh, throw the iron in back in there. Throw some ender pearls back in here. Turn this into nuggets, and then we can make our conduit. Oops. There we go with that, and that. And we've got lots of item conduit now. Terrific. Okay, and then what we need is more conduit binder for the item piping. So let's get some of that and some of that. And once we get this going, and wow, we are really running low on that power, aren't we? Um, oh, I missed that one. There we go. Now it's actually making the right thing. Okay, so let's throw some of our excess back in here. We probably don't need all of that. And we're going to go sleep again. And this is actually a normal process, I think, with a lot of automation, especially early on. Um, we do need to think about power, just because we're a little bit power-starved at the moment, running these little machines. 
but this should be okay. We're going to be able to make some lots of that stuff. Sag mill's full, so let's go ahead and get some sand in that guy. And then we'll have everything we need to start making these parts, with the exception of pure Certus Quartz crystals. So we'll get to that in a little bit here, too. So we got some quartz. We only need four right now. We can keep that stuff. Keep this stuff. Let's go find a puddle. I think we know where one would be found. Probably right out here. So is it Certus Quartz dust? Is that what it said? Charge Certus Quartz. Perfect. We don't really need to grind anything into dust, so we'll drop all of that. All of that. One, two, three, four and all of that down there, and it should turn into a Fluix Crystal. Hey, look at that. Perfect, so we've got eight Fluix Crystals, and that's what we're going to need to make some of our first tier stuff. So the ME Controller is an easy thing for us to do. Uh, ME Controller, we just need that engineering processor, and for that we do need the inscribers. And then we're gonna need some conduits and uncabling and whatnot, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on some of this, and uh, I will get back with you guys in just a little bit. Okay, so we've got our little inscriber automation set up basically the way we want it over here. So we're going to make silicon in this one, and um, let's see. So yeah, silicon in here, and once we get power, it'll make silicon printed circuits. And then this one's going to make the gold ingots into logic circuits. This one's going to make, I think, calculation circuits and so on. So we need to get some power in here next, and we drained that battery over here very quickly. So I think we're going to take a slight detour from this and make sure we have enough power to run our automation for our inscribers, our alloy smelters, and of course our actual AE network. So the next thing we're going to do is dig out a big room, um, probably on this first level down here, to put in our big reactor. And then we'll go ahead and uh, start using some nuclear power. I think I have enough graphite and yellowite to run that for now. Um, let's go ahead and double check. Graphite's pretty easy to make. You just cook coal. Yeah, it looks like I've got quite a few of that. Um, and we're going to need some glass. Don't think that's going to be a problem. We got plenty of sand, and you can see in here we got three stacks of eulorium for fuel, so that's we're going to be doing all right with that. So I'm going to do some digging, and uh, I will get back with you when I have the basic pieces put together. All right, that took a little longer than I expected, but let me show you what I've got going on here. So we've got a magma crucible that's making some redstone right now, uh, destabilized redstone. We've got some sag mill alloy smelter here, and we have a redstone energy cell in the floor. So we also have, we go down one level, this reactor. Now I had intended to build a lot of this on camera, but I actually didn't know the first thing about reactors when I was doing this, and uh, I had to learn a little bit along the way. So the access port here, this is the same as the access port here, they just have toggle modes. So this one I can set to be an outlet, and that makes it blue, and it'll take waste from this. You can also set it to be inlet, and it will take fuel in. So it's really the same thing you craft twice. And then this is the destabilized redstone I was making in the magma crucible to cool our reactor and really it's just reactor casings which is some eulorium iron and graphite along the outside and some glass reactor glass which is just regular glass and uh, reactor casings put together and then there's a reactor port over here a power tap basically that puts it into this leadstone energy cell as a buffer that's going up to the leadstone energy cell on the ceiling and that's sending power out to the machines so you can see we're actually producing quite a bit more power than we need right now um, this is going to be plenty for us for a long time and I put uh, a bunch of I put a stack of eulorium in here. I used a bunch to fill up the fuel rods, and I think it's burned exactly zero since I started after that. So those first set of fuel rods have not moved at all. Our big limiter now is just that these cables can only hold, uh, I think, 200 RF per tick, and 640 RF total. So once these are these are really the the big hold up here. Um, you can see that we're burning some red blocks of redstone for more destabilized redstone, just because I had made a bunch of this and it's draining out a little faster than it's going in and that's everything to do with these cables. So we are going to upgrade those cables at some point. But we also have our leadstone battery over here. This is working pretty well so far. It is set up with auto crafting. So now I can walk you through this whole process. So this inscriber is automatically pulling in silicon. Anything that comes out of the chest, only silicon can go into this side of it. And inscribers are automated by which sides. So anything in this slot goes in the left side that goes in the top slide, and that goes in the bottom side, and you pull out from the right. So then this one is set up for logic presses, and it only takes gold. This one is set up for engineering presses, and it only takes diamonds. And this one is set up for calculation presses and will only take pure certus quartz. This one will take redstone and printed silicon, and then any of the other kind of basic circuits. So you can see we've got a couple of each of these things made. We're turning our silicon into printed silicon, and then all we're going to have to do in the future is drop raw materials in this chest, and it will turn into printed circuits for us. Because of the item filters, it can only go into the appropriate place. 
Um, so here you can see that we've also got our power. It's draining pretty quickly. We've drained almost half of this thing just making silicon and a couple of test circuits. And uh, it seems to be working pretty well though. So once we can get this connected up to the reactor with some bigger energy cabling, we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Um, so what we can do is we can upgrade that conduit, we can make better conduit, we could also use some of the new thermodynamics uh, flux ducts to transfer RF, that's another option we have. But for now, this is working, I know I didn't actually get to the AE network much, but I have the processor set up, and the next thing we're going to work on is some crystal growth accelerators, and we'll probably do that um, right from the bottom here, we might actually do something that pulls a little faster than this leadstone energy cell, because that's also limited to 200 RF per tick. So we need some more power upgrades, and that will be in probably the next episode, um, just so we can, we've got it all running, we know how it works, now we can make it a little bit better. And again, we're going to hold off on AE until we have enough power situated that we can just dump enough energy into crystal growth accelerators and whatnot to easily make pure fluix crystals. That's going to be a lot faster than just waiting on charged surface quartz in the water. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, then please subscribe. And as always, I've been Brickwaffle. Thank you for watching.